Hi, everybody. Um, I also want to recognize um, my staff who's here right now, Carmen Menocal, who's there, who's going to be flipping my slides, and Emma Leonard, project architect, who are, have been working alongside me um, on this project, and they'll be here to answer any questions that you may have after the presentation. Um, I'm going to go fairly quickly through our presentation. There's a lot to absorb here particularly if you haven't seen it before, and I know some of you have seen some aspects of it. Um, we're happy, I want to do that for the benefit of um, providing enough time so that you may ask questions of us while we're still here, even though um, you'll always have people here to answer questions for you as well. So um, we're, there are two parts of this presentation. The first one is actually some work that's not going to happen at the same time as Hastings. I have a whole presentation about our vision for Hastings Hall being renovated. The first part about this is that, as you know, we did a master plan for the whole campus to make sure that we were thinking about all of the spaces. And so this is a bit of a continuation of that. We took some focused areas and said, let's take it a little bit of a step further into an early concept design for it. And this was to make sure that we were all on the same page in terms of the vision and also that um, from a costing point of view that we we're able to keep um, providing updated cost estimates to senior leadership and to the board of trustees to make sure we were on track. So what you're seeing here is what we call an axonometric. This is like you're cutting through the campus and looking at it as an aerial um, of the campus. So um, Broadway is right here. And you can see Brown Tower is up here on the left. Carmen's starting to point for me. Um, so, oop, if you can go back. So, so the colored areas are helping you to understand these distinct areas that I'm going to talk a little bit about. The first thing I'd like to point out in yellow is this loop, which we're calling the cloister connection, which is going all the way around the campus. Three legs of that are essentially completed. It's what you have today in some way, shape, or form, which are the east and the south and the west. Um, and then just noting that as part of the new development, what we're proposing to do, and this is still under consideration in design, is to complete that cloister loop so that you can circulate all the way around the landscape, which we think would be really special. And that's connected to the Hastings lobby as well. Then in orange is the work that we're going to be doing in the admin suite, basically the admin building. The purple is the student-oriented spaces that I'm going to walk you through that we're thinking as an improvement of, of the pit. The green all along the west side is a variety of spaces that take advantage of the space underneath James Chapel to provide other types of spaces and also spaces that in the future we can use when we need more offices or anything. We want to reserve some spaces to make sure that we have that future flexibility, spaces for gathering and worship, and then finally the classroom and um, EDS offices that will be in the new development. So that's a bit of the lay of the land at a very broad scale. So moving forward, um, I wanted to show you this, which a version of which we showed last time, which is a landscape. We're working with Matthews Nielsen landscape architects. They're wonderful landscape archi architects to help us to preserve all the special qualities of the quad in its new configuration, um, as well as create this new, what we call the cloister garden, which is in the setback between the new building and Hastings. And this is a space that will have a different, more intimate nature. It will be um, oriented towards you know, residential living, so it'll be a quiet space, a contemplative space, and we'll continue to be designing this in the coming year as well. So this is just to say this image of inspiration of what's on campus today is to say whatever you see here as we move forward into design ideas is inspired by what we see today and what we love so much about Union's campus. And you'll see that echoed throughout in some of our images. Next. Um, so very quickly on the admin building in Auburn Hall, the first thing that we're proposing to do is to improve the Brown Tower entry by making it accessible, universally accessible. The top right, you can see we would do this through a very sensitively designed low stone wall that has a ramp behind it and railings that gets you up into the rotunda and that we're thinking of um, renovating and restoring the rotunda in a way so that the security desk would be a more permanently placed desk, something that had all the security that's needed today, but in a little bit more of a formalized fashion. And our aspiration is, is that the Brown Tower entry can be an entry that people identify with Union saying, yes, that's the entrance. And that's how it was historically designed. And we, we love that as an idea. We're going to improve and make accessible the route that you go from the rotunda into the admin building, including suites to the right and left of it. And then the big difference is, is when you make a right turn and you go into the core, as you know today, which are the stairs, we're making a change to have a beautiful new stair that goes straight down to the pit area 
and allows you out to the landscape. Um, this is a zoom in of that area. So you can see here, we are taking the, where the stair is now and putting in a stair and an elevator. This was something that was in the master plan. It allows us to have full accessibility through both Admin and Auburn. And there, as I said, there's a new grand stair that goes down to the ground floor. And this is to more immediately connect people to the landscape, which is something also historically that was important to the way that the, um, that the campus was laid out. Um, the pit, this is existing conditions today. I don't think I need to tell many of you the shortcomings of this space, but we want to make it both uh, aesthetically more pleasing, functionally more appropriate, and we also know that it's a bit of a no man's land, that nobody really sort of owns it, and so therefore there's a bit of chaos when a lots of different people are trying to use it. So what we are proposing to do, this is an axonometric again, so we've lifted the lid off of the pit. And what we're showing you is by relocating classrooms, we're keeping the right classroom account, we're taking all that space, putting it on the same level, um, so there, there won't be any level changes, and the grand stair at the center will lead you down to a space that will be used for, for milling about, for in, you know, uh, spontaneous conversation between classes, and then the cafe is another space that's connected to that, and the cafe will be fit out in a way that's much more appropriate with the right infrastructure as compared to what you're doing right now, which is the best you can do with what you have, but we want to improve that. We have to the right of that where it says lounge um, is a student lounge, and this is both for quiet study between classes work. We're uh, proposing that perhaps there would be some meeting rooms there as well, and perhaps hubs for, um, for programs like social justice and other initiatives and caucuses. Um, on this side, we're proposing that there's also a commuter lounge, locker spaces, and student-facing offices, which are the aspects of the administration of union that are very directly related to student-facing activities so that you can have better connections to those people who on a day-to-day -day basis you need information and input from. I should say all of this is a plan to make sure that it all fits and that we have a concept for it, but it will be subject to lots more conversations with you and with um, people who are representing all these different uses as we go further into design. This is not a final design. This is the idea of a stair that comes down, a very welcoming stair to a space where you have little benches and places for people to, to hang out. Our idea here is that, for example, like if Schools Plus is using the campus on a weekend, that there's a space for people to mill about there that doesn't infringe on quiet study space. So there's a little bit more of a separation of uses in the pit, and then an extension of the cloister all along there in terms of its character. Next. Um, and then um, on this side of the campus, we're just showing here, this is also an axonometric, um, it's just showing that our aspirations for the space that we will have in the new development will be for EDS's offices and resource room, classrooms, additional classrooms, a chapel to replace Lampman, and a gathering space. Um, for events like this. So this too, as this building is getting designed, there's going to be a lot of back and forth about its final disposition, but this is just to give you a sense of what we're thinking about for the program for that. So that's a very quick overview of how we sort of checked our design to make sure we were on the right path for the overall campus, and the rest of this is going to focus on Hastings Hall. So um, again, in Hastings Hall, again, looking for inspiration for patterns, materials, things we see on campus that we love. Keep an eye here on herringbone uh, motifs. That's something that we're carrying forward into Hastings. Um, so this is a section through Hastings Hall. Um, and we just wanted to give you a sense of the overall layouts of it. So working from top down, the sixth and seventh floor today are dormitories. And those are going to remain as dormitories. The fourth and fifth floors, what we're experimenting with is what we're calling one bedroom flex suites. And I'm going to show you a layout of that. And we're excited about the idea of having flexibility of the different types of units that we can provide. And then the first, second, and third floor are the studio apartments along the lines of what you have there now. So the dorms and the studios are going to be familiar, but upgraded. And then the flex suites is a new idea. And then, of course, the mechanical plant at the bottom, and also mechanicals in the attic. So uh, some of the aspects of this renovation is that we have to provide new mechanical, electrical, plumbing systems into the building. We're providing new windows, which will help for both energy use as well as acoustic separation from street noise. Um, new apartment kitchens and bathrooms. Common rooms with shared kitchens on every floor, which I'm going to show you a little bit more about. And then new finishes and an updated look and feel of the corridors. Next. 
Um, not going into this in detail, but this is about how we're responding to our own sustainability plan that we co-developed and presented to you last time, and that Hastings Hall is following in the path of those guidelines that we set up in terms of energy, in terms of uh, its effect on people, encouraging people to use stairs whenever possible and if they may, water use being reduced, quality of light, connection to nature, and making sure it feels like a community. Next. So this is the way that we come at thinking about how um, finishes get put together. And when I say finishes, I mean carpet, um, materials on the walls, paint colors, et cetera. And we're in the midst of finalizing all of these. And we actually have over here in this white tray afterwards, if people want to come on over, we actually have physical samples of things that we're proposing here, countertop materials, flooring materials. But our inspiration were these types of spaces that have a richer feel in terms of the paint colors. Um, so that um, it feels appropriate to the richness of the quality of natural materials here on campus. Um, carpeted flooring, but a little bit more interesting, and we'll show you that as well. Um, so these were our inspiration images for it. Um, the flooring, as an example, what we're inspired by the herringbone texture of the brick elsewhere on campus is to use a carpet that can be used layout that way, and you can see that on the bottom right here. So if we take an accent color, say if it becomes blue, that we incorporate that into the flooring in this really interesting pattern rather than just laying out a flat rug. We just think that this will give visual interest to the corridor. Next. Um, so I'm starting from the top down to just show you some of the um, common spaces. So on the sixth floor, as an example, remember this is a floor that will have dormitories. And in dormitory rooms, there are no kitchens. So we want to make sure that we have ample common room space. What you see on the right is a blow up of that common room. And you can see it's quite large. And it has two elements to it. It has a kitchen area, and then it has a seating and dining area. So this would be for gatherings and for uses both for individuals and for groups on the sixth and seventh floors. And this has the full complement plus of all the types of refrigerators and ranges and ovens um, that you, one has in Hastings now, but in a more um, purpose-built way. And then the finishes, we're put, looking to put in clear finish woods, which is these natural woods that feel very warm, and then complement of colors so that it feels interesting, um, and nice countertops, porcelain tile floors, and wood floors for durability and also for warmth. Um, in an apartment kitchen, um, these are the fourth and fifth floor, um, what we call these one bed bedroom flex units. And what you're seeing here is the same unit set up in two different ways. So on the left, where we say two room suite, the idea is that, um, actually it should be the other way around. On the left is a one bedroom apartment where you see that you have a kitchen, a bathroom, a living room, and a bedroom. But what we've done is we've designed it in a way so that this could also be a two room suite. So it's almost like an enhanced uh, dormitory setup where you could have two people rooming, each with their private bedrooms, and it has a kitchen and a bathroom that they would share. And this gives us flexibility for the way that people want to live and the number of students who are coming in. These kitchens are a, um, a, a little bit uh, more generous than the studio kitchens that you know now in the studio apartments, and you can see that here in terms of size. And through furniture, we're gonna try our best to make these eat-in kitchens if we can have folding chairs and tables so that people can have small gatherings, but recognizing that this doesn't have a full living room, dining room, if you go to the next one, you'll see that we'll have common rooms on these floors as well. And these common rooms will have um, additional kitchen use, and then we'll have a study nook, countertops, and flexible furniture. And moving forward into the fall, we would love to get input from students about how we imagine these common spaces being used. We could set one up as an art studio. We could set one up as meditation or yoga. Uh, there's lots of different uses, and I think through a clever use of furniture that we can get to something that has a lot of flexibility. And then next is the studio apartments. And so these layouts you know much better. They exist today. We're redoing the kitchens and the bathrooms. The kitchens, we've tried to eke out another one foot of countertop space because we recognize there's not a lot of countertop space. The idea here is to put in a countertop range top and a microwave and an undercounter refrigerator and a sink. And again, to compensate for the fact that we know that a full-blown Thanksgiving dinner can't be cooked in here, if we go to the next, on these floors, we'll also have really nicely sized common rooms. And these will have more than the pantries that are on 
the flex suite floors, these are actually, will have kitchen use like wall ovens, um, a range, a kitchen, a space for seating, a space for lounging, and for studying. And again, these are some of the elevations of those kitchens that we're talking about. Um, similar pallets um, on these floors in terms of accent tiles, countertops, and some wood for warmth. For Bonhoeffer, Bonhoeffer Lounge is going to be converted into a space that will really be a benefit for, for the Hastings um, occupants here. This is just a start of a rendering just for um, an inspiration. We're going to keep everything that we love about Bonhoeffer. We're going to improve it in terms of thermal comfort and acoustics. And we're imagining again that this could be very flexible space that could be used if people want to watch TV together or if you want to have a, um, a meeting with students, or you can move the furniture around and do yoga. Um, you can just sit around and study. Again, a very flexible, really nicely sized lounge space. On the first floor, the first floor is going to have studio apartments, but it will retain the functions of having a mail room, and there will be a laundry room here that will replace the McGifford laundry room, and that comes offline. So that's the, and this will also have a common room, just like we described for the studio apartments. One thing I wanted to comment on is the, just the connection right now, how one gets into Hastings, is from a security point of view, it's not great because you can walk right into the Hastings lobby and turn right and go right into Hastings. So we're proposing to change that a little bit by coming, th you have to come through past security and then come into Hastings to its elevator. So from a security point of view, we feel like there'll be a little bit more of a separation between the residential space on campus and then the space that everyone else in the community is using, that guests and visitors are using. And on the left is a, is a rendering. We've started to talk about how we're going to improve the look and the functionality of the Hastings lobby that was once a drive-through carriage entrance. <laughs> 